Hello everyone, welcome back to the consumer behavior and fashion class. And for the last two weeks, we have talked pretty much about consumer cognition, consumer emotion, and consumers' unconscious minds, okay? So we have talked pretty much about consumers' psychological uh, characteristic uh, to uh, better understand uh, consumer behavior, how the, the mechanism of consumer behavior uh, could be understood uh, deeply, okay? So today, uh, we're going to go uh, discuss more uh, practical uh, kind of issues um, uh, and the phenomenon going on nowadays in the fashion industry, all right? Okay, so I have um, posted the link of a, a recent report uh, about the, the consumer behavior shift after coronavirus spread, okay, that has been reported by a famous Okay, uh, global consulting company, McKinsey and Company, and uh, uh, this is the New York-based company, but uh, discussing pretty much about the global issues in the global market, especially uh, in the sector of fashion. Uh, this uh, consulting company is reporting pretty much about the fashion consumer behavior, and this report is pretty uh, talking pretty much about uh, consumers' behavior shift. So I'd like to introduce this report. So if you have uh, a time, uh, please take a look at uh, the article. You can click on this link and you can see the article. And, and they are saying that uh, the fashion in general, the fashion purchases decreased uh, due to the lots of fashion industries are struggling and many of road shops and the brick and mortar uh, stores, the offline stores are struggling and many of them uh, had a uh, bankrupt already and lots of major department store uh, offline shops are struggling as well so that is why the fashion purchases uh, decreased and that was the um the uh, the general uh, forecast uh, when the general uh, the coronavirus uh, started uh, like a couple of months ago and uh, interesting thing is starting april <laughs> the fashion purchases and the fashion consumption started to increase uh, due to the online purchases okay so the online uh, purchases increased pretty much globally uh, because lots of fashion brands like presented the discount and discounted prices aggressively and that is why the fashion uh, purchase like increased pretty much uh, and like they uh, they have reported a 30 percent of their uh the global global online purchase has increased after the coronavirus spread okay so that was quite uh like eye-catching a uh, kind of number that we'd like to uh, look into okay so uh, what this report is saying is that the online shop is replacing the space of offline shop nowadays and and that kind of can uh, uh, like um, phenomenon will continue after the coronavirus uh, will end for several um, for for a certain period of time okay for several months they're saying so uh the consumer expectation therefore on online shopping are continuously increasing okay so uh, many of you have said that uh, you're feeling regret after online purchasing uh, so um for today's class, I'd like to introduce the cognitive theory of mental simulation. Mental simulation uh, of uh, consumer cognition is important, quite important, uh, to increase consumer satisfaction uh, satisfaction uh, while they are doing online shopping, okay? So uh, that is very practical and possible way uh, to uh, look into, to understand better about consumer behavior, to understand better about the mechanism of consumer behavior, right? Uh, so we'd like to talk about the consumer uh, cognition and mental uh, simulation processes of uh, being aroused on the online shopping spaces so today we're going to talk pretty much about the mental simulation and the theory associated with 
with that and we are going to go further uh, discuss how to present a better shopping environment uh, for each individual consumer okay so the personalization is the key and i'd like to show you uh, some uh, narratives in fashion and how to persuade uh, consumers to get involved in certain consumption behavior so uh, if you'd like to um, discuss further uh, in line with your consumer profiling uh, this uh, lecture might be helpful uh, to discuss further about your um, to set to increase the satisfaction level of your individual consumer okay so for today uh, um, I'd like to talk pretty much about what online is missing okay so while online shopping space is missing is I have um, presented several issues like the reality concerns so people are are thinking like uh, the online shopping space is not real and it is we cannot touch touch the clothes and we cannot see the real um, face all the faces and the and the attributes and then and the properties of the uh, the, the the articles of the fashion products and the visual imagery is that important to uh, cons uh, for consumers to imagine uh, what this product might look look like if I get as a real thing <laughs> to get it shipped to me and if I open the box and I'll see the actual piece of clothing and how to match <laughs> your expectation uh, reflected on your uh, purchase that you have purchased online okay and uh, we are going to talk uh, about the virtual shopping as well and what uh, consumers want uh, from virtual shopping and this article and many of the articles are saying that that the virtual shopping uh, presenting the the peer-to-peer -peer connection experiences might help <laughs> because uh, if you're shopping with your friends if you have a device to uh, chat with your friends while doing online shopping like uh, to present you better or convenient services it might be beneficial uh, psychologically uh, to consumers so we're going to talk about that and uh, for this uh, Thursday I have a, a reading recommended for you so we are going to talk uh, further about how the fashion brands and the fashion industry is persuading consumers to uh, to talk to generally talk and get the responses from the consumers to consumers to react to response to their advertisement okay so if you are coming up if you are facing uh, the really a uh, helpful kind of advertisement which is beneficial for your cognition and your psychological mentalization that might be really helpful so I'd like to introduce that article uh, for this week's class okay so this week we are gonna talk pretty much about what is mental simulation okay Mental simulation uh, refers to uh, your perceptual experiences. Uh, that means your imagination of your sensory experiences. Like you can see the two pictures of a piece of cakes and you're imagining that you are having those dishes in front of you served for you, okay? So you are imagining that you are eating those pies, okay? So that is uh, perceptual experiences more often automatic form of mental imagery initiated uh, by exposure to the representation of objects like these pies okay so this is experimental study and uh, last week we have talked about the between subject study uh, the be uh, between subject research study that means uh, they have divided the groups of the people into two and they have shown the participants one picture to one group and another picture for another group and they compare the result okay so uh, the question here was would you like to try this pie okay would you like to would you like to eat this pie okay so uh, the result was interesting the left-handed the left-handed consumer left-handed participants of this research said that they have intention to try this pie uh, they, they say yes uh, on the left picture 
uh, when the fork is placed on the left side of you. And the right hand is uh, the participants for using their uh, right hands pretty much uh, said yes on the second uh, picture uh, pretty much, okay? So that was a kind of um, result which is saying that the effect of mental simulation that you're imagining that you are eating those pies and the mental imagery uh, could be evoked by visuals and, the, and the very effectively if, if it is presented as the way that you are behaving, you are eating the way you are eating, okay? So the, it was effective for the left-handed consumers for the left pictures and the right-hand consumers for the right picture, okay? And this article is a uh, very interesting. It is talking about the fashion product presentation, uh, how the recommendation fashion product recommendation system, and how uh, they could effectively uh, present the items to the consumers. Okay, so uh, they have divided and they have presented two separate ways of uh, presentation. One was called as presenting the the substitute items substitute items so you have chosen your jacket that you'd like to you have intent you have intention to purchase to make a purchase you have one jacket you have selected one jacket and they're presenting the substitute the similar items and the second way is to present complements Okay, so uh, they are presenting the other items that you can coordinate with. Okay, so you have chosen the jacket and they are presenting uh, the, 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 the knitwear and the handbags and the jeans and the shoes <laughs> and coming up with your jacket. Okay, so uh, that is two separate and two kinds uh, presenting uh, the, the, the recommended items and consumers preferred like uh, this study has been done in Korea like from an, uh, Seoul National University and they found that are uh, targeting hundreds of hundreds of consumers and they have said that uh, they like uh, the complement presentation is better than than, than uh, the substitute presentation so if they are presenting a different jacket <laughs> in case you have chosen your jacket already and that recommendation system is somewhat saying like no how about this jacket so they feel not very pleasant <laughs> by if they are suggested with different jackets so they like to have a the item uh, which they can you have you can have um, um have, have your coordination so uh, you can mix with okay so you prefer uh, the complement items instead of um, rather than the substitute items that was one finding and the second experiment uh, step was about how to present the complement the complement item uh, like horizontally or vertically Okay, so uh, they are presenting the handbags and the jeans and the shoes and the jacket and, and vertically or horizontally. Which one is better? <laughs> the result was interesting. Uh, like uh, consumers, like participants of study, uh, started to uh, mentally um, like like simulate uh, the way they they wear their clothes. So if uh, the the items were presented like vertically, like you have your uh, like head to top, uh, kind of your coordination of your item is suggested vertically. Uh, that looks better. Okay, that is better. So that was a uh, quite a interesting finding. So when complements of clothing are vertically presented online, consumers are likely to feel as if uh, they were uh, they are wearing the outfits uh, due to the activation of their mental simulation. So that was the activation of mental simulation is uh, like influencing consumers' uh, satisfaction level, and they can. Uh, make imaginary uh, kind of um, experiences of wearing those clothes okay that might look okay that might look good uh, to me and the, those kind of decision making uh, could be easily made if the items are presented and vertically in this way all right
Okay, so mental simulation uh, is uh, the cognitive construction of hypothetical scenarios. Okay, so the researcher is um, giving you a scenario and giving you a what if questions. Okay, so uh, imagine that uh, you are in this scene and if you are uh, having uh, this experience, so uh, they can uh, think of their past experiences and they can reimagine, reconstruct construct your past experiences uh, because uh, you might think of the similar experiences like you have uh, came up with your recommendation system yeah in that case rec recommendation fa recommended fashion items in case you can reflect your fat your past uh, memories to uh, rehearse to make a rehearsal uh, of likely future events what you're going to uh, make a choice in the future if you're coming up with this situation okay so they are presenting their scenarios to make you uh, simulate uh, your future decision okay so uh, this kind of research study is not to induce uh, the unnecessary consumer needs but it is uh, to let consumers to make better choices in the in the future so uh, this um mm, kind of uh, approach uh, to make an experiment and to see uh, how consumers are responding, how consumers are uh, doing their mental simula simulation uh, to, uh, to process their uh, mental simulation uh, to uh, to uh, have a chance to simulate their image imagination uh, to uh, make a future decision making. So mental simulation is the initiative, uh, the imitative uh, mental representation of some events or series of events. So the event simulation serves both uh, problem solving and uh, emotional regulation functions uh, for ongoing and past stressors. So they could uh, give you if you're doing in-depth interview uh, with this kind of experiment, this kind of what if question, they're going to come up with their, their uh, past experiences to reflect their past experiences and they could uh, think of how to make better choices in the future, right? Okay, so a mental simulation increases the perceived validity or truth, truth of imagined experience and provides a framework for organized experience. They can make a plans and they can simulate how they're going to make a future decision. So uh, that is also uh, gathering all the particular emotions and the arousal of your uh, mental uh, like uh, mood and your emotions so that could uh, help you to make better choices in the future so so uh, this concept is that important for consumer satisfaction all right and this article is saying that uh, you can practice uh, how to shop <laughs> virtually okay so the online shopping is really difficult uh, to see the image and to predict the real quality of clothing but in case you could have many chances to see the visual image the virtual image of the product and you can go further to see the detailed information of that clothing and then you're going to practice again and again and you might become good at shopping okay so you are practicing how to shop to to reduce your uh, regret to reduce your regret after your online purchase so uh, this is kind of tool uh, just as for uh, the golfers to practice how to how to practice the the, the virtual golf putting so they're going backward and going uh, forward and backward to to practice again and again to become uh, like uh, like a uh, skillful yeah to do the putting and for the medical students they are using the virtual surgery program uh, the virtual surgery in case they can practice uh, the how to do the surgery because they cannot practice uh, to to the human beings so they to their uh, actual patients so uh, they are doing virtual practicing so for the consumers who are having difficulties doing online shopping uh, they could practice to see uh, the 
to see uh, how to how to view how to see the size or the fit of, or the material the structure of your clothing so uh, this kind of virtual experiences uh, could uh, be helpful for consumers to practice how to shop okay so um, okay the virtual practice instantiates uh, the same performance benefits as physical uh, practice, okay? So that is what uh, the virtual and the online shopping is good for the shoppers, okay? Okay, uh, this is also a very interesting article, and this is uh, the, uh, showing the way to reduce your impulse buying, okay? So here is the example, the mental simulation of food consumption, okay? So you're imagining the consumption of food, uh, so you are imagining that you are eating the food, you're eating the cake already, and in case if you are uh, mentally imagine that you have eaten the cake already that in that case you achieved your goal and your uh, real attempt uh, your desire uh, to eat a piece of cake could possibly decrease okay so if you are purchasing your clothing to show uh, to see your image in that fashionable outfits in that case you can take a picture uh, by viewing uh, by using the virtual shopping uh, like program or by the online shopping you can take a picture of yourself you have a uh, outfit uh, like worn on you and in that case you don't have an, any further needs to make a actual purchase so this article is saying about that if you are interested in going on a diet that is the mental simulation they are recommending okay so in case they are presenting one scenario and they are uh, presenting a substitute a scenario how to e how to arouse a consumer's needs and how to decrease consumer's needs so uh, this is consumer research and that has been uh, presented in the field of consumer study so that uh, kind of findings could be psychologically uh, beneficial uh, for consumers to practice the mental simulation to decrease their um, unnecessary needs, okay? So scenario number one is saying that uh, your partner is Jane and Jane is taking the last piece of cake. So Jane could add my piece of cake. So that is the scenario. So uh, you, uh, so for it, so you uh, simulate the step to make a new cake so you like to make a new cake by yourself that is the scenario so uh, you made your uh, cake by yourself and you can feel the texture of the creamy the the flavor and you can smell the van vanilla and uh, you can feel the granola texture and then you're gonna come up with your uh, the next step needs uh, you'd like to try the cake like physically so you will you'll go uh, for the the cake shop to make a purchase so that is the first scenario and the second scenario here is imagine the events uh, seem more likely a uh, jane is going to eat my piece of cake and the second step you uh, like increase your cognitive accessibility i can change this scenario so i took my cake back okay so jane that is my cake okay so uh, let me take back the cake so i'm gonna imagine that i'm eating those cake <laughs> that Jane is supposed to eat. In that case, uh, you're imagining that your goal uh, to try that cake, your goal has been achieved already, and your goal goal achievement uh, decreases the effortful uh, goal goal pursuit. So the line and the tree. Uh, to go for the, the cake uh, shop is just uh, not worthy and that is not uh, good for today and those kind of uh, feels like the goal has been achieved already your energy drops and your effort decreases in that case you have less chance to make impulse buying so uh, this article is saying that how consumers could uh, use their cognition their cognitive accessibility to change the scenario to reduce their unnecessary needs okay interesting right 
And this article is saying that impulse buying uh, would increase in case consumers face an uncertain future. Okay, so in this situation of the 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 coronavirus spread in the early phase of this pandemic, uh, people uh, try to to stock stockpile uh, all the sanitary items like uh, your hand sanitizer and the cleaning supplies toilet papers and they uh, stockpiled all these items for their uh, protection self-protection and for their uh, the sanitary needs and their uh, self-protection and uh, that top pandemic impulse buys were certain things uh, related to safety and sanitary issues sanitary concerns but you can see on number seven you can see clothing okay so uh, people uh, started to impress buying the clothing items like uh that is considered as the utilitarian value of clothing they might need the new clothing okay and uh, another uh, analysis by this uh, the specialist in this field is saying that uh, that is due to the lots of fashion brands as well as the fashion industry fashion system itself is forcing the brands to uh, keep their price down to uh, make an aggressive uh, pricing policy to make discounts okay so aggressive discount policy uh, so they are uh, presenting discounted price for survival of the fashion industry industry that is why uh, people were saying that uh, we are not sure we could purchase those items in the future so it is time uh, to make a purchase to stockpile in that case that is kind of investment uh, because in the future we are not sure we could purchase that item or not in case um, we have the less trust on the in the for for the for the, the society cannot cannot protect me in, in that case that that is the record of the United States so the, the society cannot protect me in that case it is myself who could protect me so especially if that issue is concerned it is associated with it with your children or especially your pets like canned food like pets uh, people became even more egocentric uh, to make lots of purchases and so stockpile all the products so that caused uh, those kind of social problems like uh, we could not uh, make a purchase for that utilitarian items and that has caused a, a social problems so that that was the early phase of the pandemic now now the things are getting changed so we are going to go further to discuss more about this issue okay nowadays many of the global fashion brands like the luxury sector the luxury fashion brands are run by a large uh, like conglomerate uh, kind of um company so b company run by the b company and 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 operated by the b company so they are following <laughs> the pricing regulation and the pricing policy of the b conglomerate and what they say is they want to uh, make a discount to keep their price down to increase the sales so it during this time uh, af right after the season at the end of the season it's time to make discounts actually but uh, since because they are making a uh, too much discount on their regular prices so that is causing consumer distrust so consumer cannot uh, trust the fashion companies because they are uh, way uh, they are presenting way high uh, price originally so their original price was too much high okay so uh, they are marking down marking down but those kind of practices are are not uh, considered as trustworthy okay so that is uh, the original price was way way too expensive so consumer trust level will highly drop uh, because of uh, those practices so a uh, lot of major fashion uh, brand designers and the top designers like and brands like a uh, designer like Craig Green and Dries van Noten and brands like Acne Studio and they are signing up 
they are signing the letter seeking to reshape the clothing discounts and they are uh, reshaping the, the calendar of the fashion presentation like fashion collections like they are presenting every season every collections but uh, for this specific period uh, due to the coronavirus they are saying that they like to delay the discount until the end of the two primary seasons to incre encourage a full price selling okay so uh, that is what the fashion designers want to do uh, but um the fashion conglomerate is saying that uh, lots of street wear brands uh, they are like shortening their lead time and they're presenting a uh, new styles like more frequently and that is what uh, the the large fashion system is asking for the fashion designers and fashion designers are saying oh that is too much you cannot do that and those kind of situation is going on and due to this aggressive uh, discounting policy of the fashion industry and a very uh, burdensome kind of fashion schedule like presenting collections uh, every season so that was too burdensome for many of the fashion major fashion brands so Saint Laurent pro proclaimed that they're leaving the Paris Fashion Week so they are saying my way <laughs> they're taking their own channel uh, to present present their collection and to present uh, the ways they are uh, giving out their lookbooks and their uh, price policy uh, will be uh, proclaimed by uh, themselves uh, as well uh, the Ux and the Net-a-Porter Net uh, which was part magazine the part virtual stores and they were a very successful kind of second season a seller of the designer brands and the and the, the collections of the designer brands and they have collected and arranged their ways in a very affordable pr affordable prices Aneta Prote uh, was uh, really successful for uh, the last decades and they are suffering as well and they are having financial difficulties and the CEO has left the company and the whole environment the retail environment in the fashion industry is changing after the coronavirus spread so coronavirus spread is causing difficulties for the fashion industry and it is shifting the consumer behavior accordingly. Uh, people, uh, even uh, the younger generation especially, uh, they are paying more attention and the environmental issues and the environmental footprint that fashion major fashion brands are making and they are paying attention to it and they are paying attention to the social contribution of the fashion major fashion brands like like big companies are uh, how they are responding to this crisis and they are um, contributing to the society how they are re socially socially responsible is um, uh, like considered importantly uh, by the younger generation as well and the younger generation are paying more attention on less disposable and more uh, lasting a more uh, environmentally friendly uh, kind of clothing items so they're paying attention more attention to that and they're paying attention to the artist the artisanal 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 i'm sorry <laughs> so made by artisan and they are appreciating the artistic like presentation and aesthetic uh, presentation of the article uh, if you're making one uh, specific purchase uh, that is worthy so they're paying more attention on the originality or the creativity of the design and the, the natural material use as well and they are putting more focused on the high quality right so uh, they are showing the mature sense of consumerism as a fashion consumers and they are uh, putting more stress on the quality wellness uh, how to increase my wellness <laughs> the, which is called as quality wellness so let's take a look at the examples of the quality wellness that consumers are perceiving uh, right now all right so the quality well-being that consumers 
uh, like interpret in their own ways is social gathering okay so what we are missing during this pandemic uh, situation is a uh, meeting uh, your friends okay so uh, if you're missing uh, going shopping with your friends uh, try virtual squad shopping so that is an app uh, that is a virtual shopping app you can go shopping and chatting at, um, with uh, your friends like doing online like uh, using your mobile phone so you can uh, see the live uh, live streaming of your favorite fashion influencers together and you can click on the items that you'd like to share uh, with your friends and they are uh, providing uh, that kind of services for consumer satisfaction but uh, that is really questioning is um the pre the peer recommendation is authentic and and they're saying it is authentic review uh, when you are going shopping with your friends it is more uh, like um, trustworthy uh, than you are seeing viewing the reviews of the people that you don't know really okay so uh, going shopping with friends were uh, that uh like significant significantly uh, in um like appreciated uh, by the younger generation consumers right but uh, there are some um, consumers who prefer uh, to shop alone so they don't want shopping they don't want to go shopping with their friends and uh, there might be various reasons but this article is saying that uh, the peer-to-peer -peer connection uh, stimulate impulse buying okay so if you are shopping with your friends you have greater chance to make impulse buying okay and in case uh, you are uh, you are shopping with family members and you're going to decrease the inverse buying okay so that that is the difference between you can um be influenced by your friends or by your family members all right okay so uh, we cannot generalize this um the result of this study but we can have many many different like um uh like um cases of the research paper which is describing about the influence the social influence of your peers your uh, friends uh, who might cause you to make impulse buying okay so uh, this difference like your uh, the impulse uh, desire increase or decrease those difference uh, is greater uh, when the group is cohesive uh, the close okay or uh, the dis difference is greater when participants are susceptible to social influence. So uh, if you, in case you refuse to uh, see the fact that you're never going to be influenced by your social like connection, like by your peers or your friends, in that case, uh, you cannot recognize that you are influenced to make an impulse, the impulse to make impulse purchase, but uh, that happen in that way okay so that was an article which is uh, relating to that um the in-person purchase a tendency and the in the presence of your friend while shopping okay and this article is saying that uh, your social gathering is good for the competition and to, for the to if you're pursuing the same goal with your peer groups and you're gathered and you're exercised with them. In that case, you are uh, having a community for the competition to share your experience to uh, reach the same goal uh, with the other other members of the community. So uh, that kind of consumer needs has been been well uh, reflected by this brand like Adidas and many other sportswear brands and the activewear brands are uh, promoting uh, their uh, retail environments for uh, to present the platform uh, for the, the community the like sporting community and they are exercising together to reach the same goal like this and they are having uh, their um, venue uh, to gather online and exercise all together and those kind of exciting and very pleasant kind of um uh shopping experiences is 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 uh, meeting the consumers new needs in this specific situation right
So there is new need uh, of consumers to exercise at home uh, with their body weight with low equipment. So that is why a lot of yoga mats and the yoga blocks are um, selling really well nowadays. And lots of uh, like fashion brands like Puma, Puma, Nike, Adidas, uh, they are uh, presenting the online classes. <laughs> Uh, through their platform, their own media. So uh, that is why uh, lots of consumers are responding to that and lots of the gym and uh, gym and, and many of the gyms are presenting online classes as well. And that is good for the environment as well because uh, the class is only if they are having the class like physically, like in in the real world uh, there must be like a uh, 40 uh, members in one classroom but in this case they can have like um, like thousands of um, like hundred hundred thousands of the people like uh, logged in at the same time and and exercise all together and they are uh, like um, Make the making the donations for the people who are suffering from the coronavirus uh, crisis, and that is helpful for the society as well and for the environment as well. And they are uh, changing the consumption atmosphere in these ways. And nowadays, people are exercising to get stronger and to be energetic and to cope with their stress after the work. And that is the major reasons why they are practicing, they are exercising. But like a decade ago, like 10 years ago, there was a thin ideal, <laughs> like people uh, like uh, wanted to have this thin, like thin, slender uh, kind of... Mm, uh, image of themselves so they went on a diet to become thinner thinner and that was a kind of mood what which was prevalent on those day those days and this research has been done in 2009 uh, pretty old but that was a uh, quite an, an interesting kind of uh, approach to have their experimental research to give out uh, the, their participants the scenarios like two separate scenarios and to see how consumers are responding to this scenario so they have presented the image of one thin model and they have have two separate uh, scenario one is about a social comparison scenario and the second one was called fantasy instruction scenario okay the social comparison scenario was presented to encourage uh, participants to compare themselves with the image and the second scenario was to imagine what it what it would be like to be the woman in the image okay so uh, they are uh, using their mental simulation that i am the woman who is standing there yeah that was the second scenario and the first one is i'm the one uh, who 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 is comparing oneself with that woman okay so that was quite a typical kind of approach to see uh, how people are responding but result was not uh, that common that predictable yeah and they have said that the fantasy instruction led to improved positive mood i feel good by just imagining that i'm the person who is standing there and they could not um influence their body image how they are perceiving how they are satisfied with their body and that could not influence their body image but they just uh, felt good okay so the emotional attitude the emotional uh, your perception your uh, cognitive emotional attitude could be changed by watching the image okay so that was quite a a a finding of this research okay so that was an old article but it is saying that uh, uh, people's uh, like um, perception and cognition and emotional responses could be changed by watching that visual image okay 
okay so uh, suggesting and presenting the image of the fashion image like fashion ads and the fashion you know, like uh, presentation uh, to your participants your consumer to describe uh, a story <laughs> by watching by seeing by viewing this fashion image uh, that is one method that Roland Bard has suggested okay so we have talked pretty much of Roland Bard's semiotics and there are three steps of semiotic analysis the first step is called denotation okay denotation okay note is the code and the meaning and d code means you're gonna uh look for the meanings behind that code behind the note okay so uh, you're gonna that is the first step in viewing a sign uh, or the signal or the literal meaning of that signal okay so they're gonna uh, see the picture of that image and they're gonna use their adjective like feminine uh, use their adjective like confident and those kind of words that is is the first step of semiotic analysis which is called denotation and the second step is connotation okay so the connotation means that your cultural understanding and cultural perception about those image is reflected here so the what the meaning behind the image is the viewer creates uh, based on their uh, decision and the feelings and the, it is how it is photographed so uh, people will, will uh, say something about uh, their cultural understanding in their cultural context and they are presenting their wells how they are understanding uh, how they feel about this symbol how they feel about this image and that is the connotation okay and uh, this third step and the final step is called the word view okay so you're gonna see the word view their personal values how they see the word okay so the links and pattern of thoughts of behavior uh, such as uh, liberty sexuality and the autonomy and those kind of words if you are just uh, giving out narrations to describe a story stories of this image so in case your participant your consumers are describing about this image telling stories about this image those kind of words <laughs> that you can witness uh, um on your interview transcript and you can just count on the words which kind of words they have uh, presented uh, which is um, telling about their worldview and their values their lifetime values what they are uh, considering importantly while living living their lives so uh, this is the process to uh, search for the meanings of the clothing of your consumer okay so uh, uh, for many of you, I have suggested to uh, present a picture of that uh, that image to to let them to be talkative, to uh, be to be able to describe uh, what they feel about, what they think about, uh, what they um, are making certain uh, decision or having certain kind of perception on that image and those kind of storytelling of your consumer uh, by himself or herself will tell pretty much about uh, their worldview and their lifetime values okay so for this coming thursday for the next class we're going to continue to talk about uh, this fashion image and mental simulation okay so uh, we're going to go further to discuss about how consumers are uh, like um uh like store do doing uh, their storytelling by watching the fashion image or the fashion advertisement okay so uh, how the narrations are going on uh, based on the consumers uh the psychological uh, kind of characteristics like their uh, interest and their activities their uh, values and all those kind of like uh psychological um characteristics 
and their lifetime values as well uh, could be reflected on their narrations okay so uh, they have uh, uh, adopted the Roland Barthes the Roland Barthes uh, semiotic analysis and you can see a great example of semiotic analysis through this article so I'm gonna talk uh, more about that on next coming uh, this coming Thursday and I'm gonna see you uh, on next class okay so thank you for watching and your um assignment for uh, mm, uh your uh, interview transcript was due uh, this thursday but i have extended to due this sunday okay so you can um like complete your interview by this sunday and in case you you really need more time please let me know you can email me and and we can we can adjust the schedule okay so I thank you so much for your uh, hard work. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Okay. So see you on Thursday. Bye-bye.